here's Jack Barnett 21 sandwich bar and I would like to create three charts the first one I would like to do a line chart I start on B3 and go down to C6 I then go up to the chart wizard since I want to do a line chart then I go to line chart there's my choice if I try that I can see the line chart that I want that'll do I choose that if I try rows instead of columns I get that useless so I go back and I choose that on to next lettuce line chart this is the x-axis and you can see it's days it's obviously a lettuce chart and so I don't need that which is the legend this is the number sold the numbers sold so I'll put that there I'll go to the legend and turn it off okay I can see how many are sold there but it might be useful to turn on a table there so I'm going to put a table in the bottom of my chart I'll go to next alright it's a line chart and I'll finish there it is the number of lettuce is sold they're down there on my chart OK, so back to my sandwiches. This time, starting in the same place and pressing the control button, I'd like to do a cheese chart. Alright, what sort of chart? If I go up to here, I'm looking at a pie chart. So I'll take that. What does it look like? OK, fine. On to next. Can I look at rows? No on to next it's a pie cheese pie chart okay do I want the legend yes I need to know what these various things are that's for sales on Monday and so on labels I'd like to know how many I sold on each day so that's what I've got from there they're all cheese sandwiches so I don't need to know any more than that if I go to next I can put in there pie chart okay I've finished that there's my pie chart there's the number of sandwiches sold on Wednesday Tuesday Monday. I can go into there and drag it out. OK, a reasonable chart. Back to sandwiches. Now my third chart, I'd like to do a 3D chart. That means I cover everything. I'll go up to the chart wizard, go down to columns, there's 3D. I've chosen that. That's what it's going to look like. OK, on to next. Now if you look at it, lettuce, cheese and egg, it's wrong. So I'm going to change it around so that I've got Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Now it's right. OK, so rotating, going between those was the right thing to do. Let's go on to next. Title. 3D chart. It's actually a 3D sandwich chart, and I won't write on that. Days is obviously X. Numbers sold. No, fillings. Fillings is obviously there, the flavours, and numbers sold are there. OK. If I go on to the grid lines, I'd like to take out the grid lines. I don't need those. If I go to the legend, I'd like to take that out so that my chart gets bigger. I don't need my data labels or my table. Data table, I've already used that. 
so I'm going to go to here on to next and try and take my chart there 3D I'll just leave it as a 3D chart okay as a new sheet if I do it as a new sheet of course I get the best chart now step one I'd like to take the walls out Right, I'd like to take those lines out at the top if I could. I don't seem to have done it then. I'll try once more by clicking here and trying that. Yes, I've taken that out. Now, the next, I'm unhappy with the, the lettuce coloured blue, so that's better. I'm unhappy with the cheese coloured purple, so I double click onto it. If I double click onto it there, I can change my egg to white. Okay, so I'm happy with all of those. If I click down here, you'll see I can turn it round. That's rather astonishing. Now I'm going to go back and look at my sandwiches there. I actually stored a lettuce here. I'm going to Control X and pick up that lettuce. Now let's go back to my chart here. If I click onto there and Control V, then you'll see I can paste a lettuce into one of these. That is rather amazing. Can you see it? If I click onto there and turn it round, yes, you can see it. Let's go back here. Now, on Wednesday, because of some problem I had 10 sandwiches returned now if I go back to my 3d chart that is the result so I can go into minus amounts and show those on the chart as well okay dragging generally when I look at January and this box I see there's a tiny box in the, in the corner there. If I manage, there's my Swiss cursor. If I put my Swiss cursor on there and move it into the corner there, I can drag that down. Alright. I can do the same here. I can do it twice. Both Monday and mom I can even go there with Jack Barnett huh. Jack Barnett 21, 22 and 23 I can go into custom lists if I go to tools options down to custom lists I can create my own list Jack, John, James, Jonah, alright, okay that, if I come here, Jack, and drag it down, there they are, dragging, okay, I'd like to finish off with home accounts, here it is, Income, balance, interest, wages. This is balance brought forward. Bow, BF. Okay, let's start off by adding up. I go up to the sigma, the auto sum, 1, 2, and add it up. I go down to here, move from putting the cursor underneath, and then up to here, 1, to and add it. If I go to here, now it's income minus expenditure, so I put in an equal sign, click onto there, put a minus sign, click onto there and press enter, there you are. That equals that minus that. Now, if I drag all of this, by putting my Swiss cross onto there, I can drag that to there. 
Now this should actually, at the end of the month, go up to the start of the next month. So if I come up to here and put equals, I can click down there and press enter. It will jump up, jump up there and you see that because I put noughts in at various places, it adds it up. Now it's added down there. OK, I wonder, can I drag it all along now? Well, let's have a look. If I go down to M, there you are, I have managed to drag it all, and I've gone along to December. For some reason, April looked a bit wide, so I'll push that back there. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, no yes, it all works. OK. Now let's come here and try an if statement. If is just in there, in the insert function. If I look at all, click onto there and type i, then I can come to if. There's if. Now what are we saying? logical test. If that is greater than that shift full stop zero then I get paid that the same times. There's the three percent but I only want to talk to this cell. To make cells absolute I press F4 and it puts dollar signs around them. OK, I must finish off with a zero, and that's OK. Let me just come to here and get my format painter and paint that figure a bit bigger. All right, now what have I said? I've said that this equals that times that. If I drag it along, I'll say that this equals that times that. Let's drag it. There you are. OK, now, my interest at the end of January must be put up here in February. So I'm going to put equals up there and go and grab it down there. Now if I drag that along, there you are. It'll add it all in. Now if I come to here, what I want is this figure to equal this figure. I'll click there with my Format Painter and just see if I can click it there. Right, so I want that figure to equal that one. OK, now let's try this. If I come to here and add that one, two, that's the total interest. Just to make sure that I'm going to get the whole row, I'm going to try that. One, two, yes. Let's drag that down. Now, I have if I if I put my cursor there and press it there, I'll add that lot and not that lot. So what I want to do is that. And then do that, and that's added up that line. Alright, I'm going to put my cursor there. Click onto your sum, one, two, the sigma. This time I can drag it down, one, two. Now I'm coming to here, highlighting both of them, going up to there. Now why am I highlighting both of them? So that I don't add along there, instead I add up there. Now what am I trying to do? And I'm suggesting if the yellow figures are correct, then I have done all of my sums correctly. So I'm going equals that figure minus that figure, enter, when they're the same, then I have done it correctly. OK, I've tried to do three charts, a 3D chart, a pie chart, a line chart. I've looked at dragging, I've looked at some home accounts, and back to where I started, 
on some sandwiches. Thank you for watching.